Hey, Hurricane Barrel is barreling at Texas right now. Pun intended. Hey, and I wanted to tell you something because there's going to be some damage from this thing. It looks like, at least, uh, there's going to be some significant impact, maybe around Corpus, maybe around Houston, maybe somewhere in between. We don't know yet. But there's something that I've seen insurance co companies do dozens of times that they may try to pull with you. If, God forbid, you have storm damage and a tree breaks and causes damage to your home or property. And so I wanted to warn you about it. So stay tuned. I'm going to tell you all about it and what you can do to prevent this problem from happening. So hypothetical situation, and it's not hypothetical to me. It is to you, but I've seen it play out dozens of times. Tree falls on the house. Me and my guys are ready to go. We've gotten permission from the homeowner to cut the tree off the house. They got a roofer coming in. 30 minutes, an hour after we're done with our work to come and tarp the roof and you got a storm coming in later on that night. Well, here's the problem is if that tree is not mitigated, if it's not removed, those holes are still there in the house. Rainwater will get in and make the problem 10 times worse. So I had one just last year in Austin when they had that ice storm and we've got the crane there ready to go. We're about to cut the tree and I get a call from Stephanie, the insurance adjuster. Miss Stephanie tells me, Mr. Latham, your high pressure sales tactics make you very, very suspicious. We think you might be pulling insurance fraud. And I say, excuse me, ma'am, have you read their insurance policy? She says, of course I've read their insurance policy. I said, were you aware of the duty to mitigate clause written into their policy? She says, I am. I said, then you're under the impression and you're in the understanding that the homeowner basically is obligated. They have the right and the obligation to do anything within reason. Obviously, don't do crazy things like pay a tree guy $100,000 or whatever. But they do have the right and the obligation to do any reasonable thing to prevent further damage. Sometimes it's written as to get the home to a livable condition. It just depends on the company and the policy. So Mrs. Stephanie, the insurance adjuster, is sitting here telling me all these things about how I'm committing potential, potentially, she said, committing insurance fraud, how I looked suspicious. She took all my information and I don't care. Well, unfortunately, the homeowner believed her. Storm comes in later on that night. Water gets in the house. Fast forward. Now, we finally get permission. We get the tree off. The house gets tarped. The roof gets replaced. They're good to go. Fast forward three, six, three, three months later, <clears throat> they got mold in their house and they call up the insurance company and say, hey, remember that storm back then that knocked the tree over and there was a storm that came in later that night, that night and your insurance adjuster told us not to do anything until she could actually physically put eyes on the tree in the house in the situation, get pictures or whatever. And they said, oh, Mr. Tree owner, Mr. Policy owner, I'm very sorry, but you remember that duty to mitigate clause? Well, you had the obligation to do something about that when it happened and you have a tree care company on site ready to remove the tree and you chose not to mitigate the damage. And then there was damage, more damage, like 10 times as much damage. And so we're not going to cover it. And so Mr. and Mrs. Smith, let's call them, are stuck holding, footing the bill. They're stuck dealing with this out of pocket. And that just makes me sick. So I wanted to talk to you about that. When you have damage, or if you have a damage, I should say, because of a major storm, it is absolutely critical. I don't care what your insurance adjuster says. I don't care what the underwriters to your insurance policy say. The law states that that contract, that insurance policy that you have, is what determines how things play out in a court of law. And so that duty to mitigate clause, go back through and check it for yourself. Don't believe me. Go in and check your own very own policy and check to see if that's there. I almost guarantee you it's there. Some of them don't have it. They rephrase it differently. But it's all, every single policy has a, a little clause in there somewhere that says you have the right and the obligation to prevent further damage. And if the company's there, ready to go, they can pin that back on you. And unfortunately, Mr. and Mrs. Smith, they lost the case and they wound up having to foot the bill.
Let's don't be Mr. and Mrs. Smith. If you've got a tree problem after a big storm, first of all, we'd love to help you. We might be there at, at your storm. We like to storm chase a little bit, although I'm getting old and I like spending time with my family a little more. But you guys need it. So if, if we happen to be there, hit us up. We'd love to help you out or at least get you in contact with somebody professional that can. And don't believe them if they tell you, wait a minute, you have to wait for your insurance adjuster. I hear this every storm I've ever been to. Usually they blast it all over the news. And to their, to their credit, you do have a lot of, I call them the tree rats come in and they got their chains on their ladder and all of a sudden they used to do uh, painting or fencing, but now all of a sudden they're in the tree care business and they come in, they mess it up, they cause more damage, whatever. Uh, don't hire those guys. Hire a professional organization, even if they're from out of state. A lot of these guys are serious and they work directly with your insurance company to where you don't pay them a penny. You pay your deductible, the insurance cover company covers the rest, and you can actually give them permission to do so, zero dollars in most policies. Some of them require a little bit down, but uh, most policies are going to allow you to pay the insurance deductible to your insurance company. They're going to handle the rest. So we build the insurance company and get paid a very long time from then. Uh, it's usually three, six months or so. It sucks. I don't like it, but we're happy to do it because... You guys need help and we're professional and can help you take care of it. So, hey, thanks so much for watching. Do me a favor. Like this if you like it. Love it if you love it. If you have questions, shoot me a comment down below. And please, please, please subscribe to the channel. I don't mean to sound desperate there, but we'd love to have you. We're pumping out really, really good tree content. I've spent 21 years learning all this stuff and you're not a tree expert. I am. That's my job to teach you. And so that's my mission is I want to teach you about your trees that you love and care for and help you manage them better so you can enjoy them instead of dealing with them trees can be a headache when pro um, improperly managed so thanks again for watching we'll see you next time